This following presentation will focus on why you should never mistake setbacks for failure. And this is something that a lot of people are doing. Everyone suffers a setback no matter how small or large. It should not be considered a failure at all. You might say, well, I failed a test. And this is one of the reasons why setbacks are confused for failure in general. Sure, you failed a test, but you can always retake it for a better result. Not passing a test is a setback, but it's never the end of the world. The only time failure happens is when you've completely given up. That's all it is. It takes giving up to brand yourself a failure. Setbacks are what make us successful. If anyone tells you that they have been successful without setbacks, that's a no-brainer example of a lie. So let's explain a few reasons why setbacks and failure are two different things. First, setbacks are a learning experience. When we suffer a loss in a contest or if we don't pass a test, we need to know where it went wrong. Somewhere in the process, we've made a mistake. If you fail a test, it could be that you didn't study at all. If you lose a game, perhaps you played against someone who had the better skill or strategy compared to you. This is one of the reasons why pro athletes study film before every game. To study their opponents. To identify their strengths and weaknesses. To prevent setbacks in the future. Find a way to fix what went wrong. Strengthen whatever weakness you might have. Second, Setbacks are a great way to help us develop resilience. This will help us bounce back from adversity, and it can be a huge plus in both our professional and personal lives. Setbacks will toughen us, not weaken us. Think of resilience like a muscle. You need to strengthen it on a regular basis. It will help better equip us to handle future challenges. Going back to the pro athlete as an example. A pro athlete will get hurt to a point where they're out for weeks, months, even an entire season. Rather than give up, they will rehab and recover in an effort to re-strengthen and get back to work. They persevere through the setback and it builds up their resilience in the process. They become stronger, more capable athletes. So strengthen your resilience and you'll be able to handle future setbacks with ease. The last example is that setbacks will redefine success. As we've mentioned before, setbacks are one of the pillars to success. Some may have less setbacks than others. But no matter how many setbacks you've suffered, success is still possible. You shouldn't rush into achieving a goal. You shouldn't get into this keeping up with the Joneses attitude because someone is somehow way ahead of you. Success should also not be narrowly defined. It should be more broad in its terms. For example, personal growth, fulfillment, and happiness should be excellent ideas for how success is defined. If you're growing little by little, that's a sign of success. If you're happy with the small wins, that's success. Get the idea? The small wins count as success, and they will snowball into something much greater. That's it for this presentation. We hope you learned a few great things from this. Setback and failure are two different things, and the two should never mix. If you have any questions regarding this presentation, please feel free to reach out to us. Thanks and take care. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.